This next section we'll look at in Unit 2 uh, concerns Newton's laws of motion. And the first uh, lesson we're going to look at is Newton's first law. If you're interested, uh, when this posts, guys, you can uh, take a look here at this link. Uh, Newton, uh, who's this guy? Uh, just a, some interesting facts about who Sir Isaac Newton was and his accomplishments. Also, a TV series I had mentioned before in class, uh, Cosmos. Episode 3 uh, does deal with uh, Newton, his early beginnings and the accomplishments uh, that are attributed to him. Okay, so let's continue on through this. Okay, Newton's first law of motion, uh, also known as inertia, is covered on page 125 of the textbook. And it states that if an object is stopped or at rest, it tends to remain that way. So as an example, if you had a box sitting on the floor, uh, the box won't move unless a force acts upon them. Or dishes on a table, they'll remain stay them. Uh, they're at rest, so there's no need for them to move. Uh, they won't be able to move. If an object is at rest, it will tend to remain at rest unless it's acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. And it's the unbalanced force that you have to pay attention to as we go uh, through the next couple of slides. If an object's moving in a straight line, it tends to remain that way. So if you're riding in a car at a constant speed and the car suddenly stops, uh, what happens? Uh, well, uh, through experience you know that if the car is moving forward and suddenly stops, that you continue to move forward. And from that, well, why are seatbelts important? And that you know that seatbelts are important to prevent that, uh, that, from you leaving the car and going through the windshield. What's happening there is that you're already in motion. So inertia wants to keep you moving, wants to prevent you from stopping. So Newton's first law of motion, if an object's at rest, it won't move unless it's acted upon by another force. So if you had a uh, box on a desk, it wouldn't move unless you pushed against the box. You've just added an extra force to the situation. Now, if an object's already moving, and it wants to continue moving that way. It doesn't want to stop unless it's acted upon by another force. So that's what happens when you're in a car. If you're continuing to move forward and the car puts on the brakes, well, you want to continue to move forward. And that's inertia. And, well, the seat belt is a restraining device there to keep you in the car to act against inertia. Uh, stopping boops. Stopping your boots helps remove snow from them. Why? Well, I'll let you guys think about that one for a moment. Uh, if the boot's in motion and you suddenly stop it, well, the snow is also in motion on the boot. And that as you stop the boot, you're kicking the snow off. The snow wants to keep removing in motion. So as you stop, the snow still wants to keep going. So the boot stays still, but the snow keeps moving, which is why you kick the snow off. A uh, toolbox slides around the back of a pickup truck as it drives along a twisty road. Why? Uh, anyone who drives a truck knows that anything you put in the back will move around because as the truck moves, the object wants to keep its original position and it will keep sliding around. Some of you may have done this before. A uh, head of a hammer is loose and you wish to tighten it, or if you have an axe, anything similar to that. Uh, so you bang the, uh, the end of it with the handle pointing against the ground. So if the top of your hammer is loose, well you take the handle part and you hit it against the ground, that'll draw the top of the hammer back down onto the uh, onto the handle. Because as the, ha as the handle comes down to a stop, the hammer part, the metal part, wants to keep moving. Although you've stopped the handle, the metal part of the hammer wants to keep moving down. Or if it was an axe or a pickaxe or anything similar to that. So you're using inertia there to your benefit. So Newton's first law is two parts, and we've already stated these. So an object here, so an object at rest tends to, oops, I'll go back one. An object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an external unbalanced force. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion in a straight line and at a constant speed unless they're acted upon by an external unbalanced force. So if you're at rest, it takes a force to get you to move, and if you're moving, it takes a force to get you to stop. 
Newton's first law is sometimes called the law of inertia. A inertia is built an object to resist change in the state of motion. So if at rest, so if at rest it tends to want to remain in motion. Uh, inertia depends on the mass of the object, but not the speed. And that's important to remember. I want you to focus on that here. The inertia depends on the mass of the object, not its speed. So as the mass increases, so does inertia. Speed has no effect on inertia whatsoever. Now just let me pause for a sec. Okay, so here's an example of inertia. Uh, the enforcement driver truck uh, didn't realize that as you slam on the brakes of the truck, the large metal slab in the back uh, doesn't have brakes. So as the truck is moving down the road, everything about the truck wants to keep moving. So even though you may slam on the brakes, this brick here that's in the back wants to keep moving forward. So inertia acts to keep objects moving. So as the truck came to a stop, well, it's the same as you sitting in the truck. You would lean forward, well, it's so does the large metal slab in the back, or rocky slab in the back wants to keep moving forward. So that's inertia. Remember, it's not necessarily this, it's not the speed that matters. It's the mass of the object that matters. Okay. So inertial and non-inertial frames of reference. A bus, and there's two different examples here. A bus is in uniform motion down a very smooth road, so it's a constant speed in a straight line. So here's your bus, and it's moving down the road at a straight motion. A small ball is placed on the floor of the bus. What happens to the ball? Well, if the ball is placed there, uh, nothing should happen to it. So if you're driving down the road in the bus, and you lay a small ball, whether it be a softball or soccer ball, on the floor of the bus as it's moving, nothing should happen. The ball should stay perfectly still. But keep in mind that as you're moving down the road, as a bus is moving down the road, say at 60 kilometers an hour, you're moving at 60 kilometers an hour, so is the ball. So everything is in the same frame of reference. Now, but what happens if the driver touches the brakes? That's going to cause the bus to have a small negative acceleration. And it may be so slight that maybe you don't feel it, but you will be able to see what will happen to the uh, ball there. So as you're moving down the road, driver touches the brakes, there's a negative acceleration in the opposite direction to you. So the ball is now going to be moving at a different speed at, uh, than it originally uh, was in the beginning. Now, so the bus has slowed. The ball, though, uh, still moving at 60 kilometers an hour. So what happens to the ball is the ball is going to want to move forward. So inertia is going to keep the ball moving forward. Although the bus has slowed slightly, and you may not have even felt the, the bus slow down, it, will, <coughs> it has, the ball still is going to want to maintain its original direction. So the ball will roll forward. We need to remember frame of reference is the place in which the motion is observed. An inertial frame of reference is one in which Newton's first law is valid. So from your point of view, Newton's first law is still working. That an object in motion wants to stay in motion, and an object at rest wants to stay at rest. So when there's no motion, or when there is uniform motion. So in these cases, you'd have to have constant speed in a straight line if there's uniform motion. Remember, you can't be twisting, turning, slowing down, or speeding up. A non-inertial frame of reference in one in which Newton's first law is not valid, in which it doesn't apply. So when you get acceleration. So in the last example, uh, Newton's first law is not uh, applying there. The object's no longer at a steady state of motion. So the bus slows down. It's no longer considered a frame of reference for Newton's first law because now you've changed it. It's not a constant speed anymore. So one example here to finish off this section. 
Suppose you're sitting on the edge of a pond with a very smooth surface. Your two friends are at the center of the pond, each push identical wooden crates towards you. One crate is empty, but the other one contains a heavy load of firewood. There's very little friction on the ice surface, and both crates slide towards you with the same velocity. How could you use inertia to determine which crate uh, was which? So how would you know which of the two crates was empty and which was full of uh, firewood? So go back, take a look at the, uh, the other slides. There's a reference uh, there, and I've said it a couple of times, to velocity and mass. And we'll talk about this question when we get back in class on Monday.